paraphrase, it outlines that a witness gives evidence by being called and examined by counsel assisting, and then there will be, quote, I can quote this bit, there will be no cross-examination of witness A at that time. Instead, and now I'm paraphrasing, if a witness being asked to give their evidence by counsel assisting says something that you think needs to be checked or tested, you have to say what it is, you have to produce contrary evidence from another person who you want called as a witness and explain to counsel assisting and to the Royal Commission what it is that you think can be achieved by cross-examining somebody. This is Kafkaesque. This is extraordinary. This is contrary to all the rules of courts and procedures of fairness in pretty much any other forum or tribunal. But that's how this Royal Commission is going about its business. The ACTU, of course, has an interest in the conduct of this inquiry, and Tim Lyons is the Assistant Secretary of the ACTU, who's prepared to pop his head up in order to inevitably bear some of the heat that comes from daring to ask these questions. Tim Lyons, good morning. Good morning, John. We may get to share a cell if we're found to be in contempt, but this Royal Commission, to me, seems to be becoming more bizarre by the day. Well, I think the starting point for us, John, is that this is uh, an intensely political Royal Commission. Um, I don't think uh, there's anybody in Australia that thinks that the Prime Minister, um, the Attorney-General and Senator Abetz set this up uh, in order to end up with an end result that had stronger, more democratic, more accountable, uh, growing trade unions. Um, they set it up in order to do damage to the moral authority of trade unionism and also to distract us, frankly, from, or to attempt to distract us from uh, fighting back against some of their agenda, damaging people's rights at work, attacks on pensions, attacks on the social wage. Well, it needs to be said, I would have thought that there are several people in the trade union movement doing a pretty good job at demolishing your credibility, your integrity and your reputation all on their own without the Royal Commission needing to do much at all. John, uh, as someone who spent uh, a great deal of time uh, internally um, here working on governance issues and with all of our, uh, or many of our affiliates, um, you know, uh, you won't get an argument from me that I wish that uh, there hadn't been um, some of these uh, demonstrated examples of bad behaviour. Um, but our point is that a Royal Commission wasn't the answer to this. Um, a Royal Commission uh, really is uh, usually a bit of a show trial, and I think this one's turning into something of a remarkable spectacle. The answer to wrongdoing uh, is a proper police investigation. Uh, and what Which there has been, in well, fact. Well, about a number of these things that the Commission is currently trawling over, that's right, even some of the ones that are basically an archaeological dig from 20 years ago. Um, the proper course is that if there is evidence of wrongdoing, it be uh, given to the police. What we said, if there was... Uh, some evidence of something more widespread that the proper course was a, a police task force involving state, federal police if necessary, and if there's a need for the sort of coercive powers and wiretaps and other things that, that sometimes Royal Commissions could do, and this one can, uh, that you would involve the Australian Crime Commission. And OK, so, but sometimes yeah, Royal Commissions, as we've seen in the past, can go where other organisations can't go. But what sort of an inquiry is it where parties who are affected, and indeed whose interests are being in many ways... Uh, <laughs> Uh, put under the microscope, they're not entitled to cross-examine a witness at the time when their evidence is given. You've got to produce something in writing and at a later date you might be given leave or permission to ask a few questions. That's bizarre. Well, I think this is this is one of the difficulties uh, with Royal Commissions generally, but I think with this one in particular, John, I think it's important your listeners understand that while a, a Royal Commission uh, looks like a court, it smells like a court, the media reported as being a court, it is not a court. Um, the normal rules of evidence, as you know, of course, John, don't apply. And so what Royal Commissions trade on, essentially, is, is hearsay evidence, it's rumour, it's innuendo. And large numbers of people get in witness boxes, put in statements, and essentially tip a bucket on, usually, uh, people they've got a grudge against. OK, well, talking and, of and tipping what, a bucket... And what, and what happens in these contexts is that sometimes those allegations are made, uh, they're not tested, uh, they're, in some cases they're not even pursued and the people against whom an allegation is made never get a chance 
uh, to put a contrary view. And OK, but we've got at the moment, we've got a commission of inquiry, not a royal commission, but a commission of inquiry into Hazelwood underway. We've got a royal commission into sexual abuse into institutions underway. None of them are running themselves this way. In fact, they are complying with, by and large, the normal procedures and practices that are used in any sort of tribunal or court. So why is this one set up in such a completely different way? The particular practice direction that you've referred to is much more restrictive as to people's cross-examination rights uh, than a range of other inquiries that you could point to. It's more restrictive, as, as you said, than the one into institutional responses to child abuse. Uh, it's, it's more restrictive than the one that was established that you may recall, John, into the collapse of the HIH Royal Commission. Uh, and so what just to take the practical example from yesterday, the evidence that was given yesterday at the Royal Commission uh, wasn't subject to cross-examination. And in fact, if there is any cross-examination in respect of that evidence, it won't occur till August. <laughs> now, uh, so what you have is a whole bunch of allegations reported, no cross-examination, no testing. Some media agencies choose to report that essentially as fact. Uh, and uh, we'll see what happens if there's any cross-examination in August, if people's attention is still on those things and there's any chance for people to clear their name. This, this is something that we've been um, very concerned about because it just plays into this space of this being essentially uh, looking like a political show trial. OK, so let's go back to where I started. Uh, last week I read to air for half an hour, in fact, some now redacted paragraphs of evidence from one participant at the Royal Commission, Bruce Wilson, the former boyfriend of Julia Gillard and a man who's clearly got some serious questions to answer about his own conduct within the AWU years ago. But he was making allegations about the role played by a now semi-retired Melbourne solicitor, Harry Nowicki, in um, uh, helping other witnesses prepare their testimony. Now, it's been, until now, not known that the same Harry Nowicki was found to have sworn a false affidavit, effectively to have lied, and was found guilty of professional misconduct by VCAT, the Legal Services Commissioner, took a case against him in 2011. I mean, that's, that's about as bad a, a finding, short of getting struck off, that a solicitor can have. Well, I think um, the, the, the key point here really is this, is, is, is if, um, and there's been, uh, in, in the days of evidence we've had to this Royal Commission, um, virtually, I think, every witness has, from their statement or in their oral evidence, uh, led a whole bunch of hearsay evidence. And most of that has been allowed to simply stand. Um, now, I think our view would be is if you're going to say, well, look, we're going to allow hearsay evidence, uh, then what's the basis on which you'd strike out some of the hearsay evidence? Mr Blewett, in cross-examination, um, conceded that he had not written his own witness statement. It had been written for him by Mr Nowicki. He couldn't answer questions about it because Nowicki had written it for him. The, A few years ago, Nowicki was found by no less an authority than VCAT on proceedings commenced by the Legal Services Commissioner to have sworn affidavits that were just basically just totally untrue in trying to collect some fees from someone who he'd acted for. Well, this is extraordinary stuff. I think at least in respect of those, um, those matters uh, involving, uh, you know, from 20 years ago that you're referring to, uh, that there clearly is a bunch of uh, um, obsessives about this who run a campaign over several years, I think uh, almost entirely because of um, uh, the fact that Julia Gillard's name uh, has come up in these proceedings, that they've pushed this for years on the internet um, via some media outlets, and we're now effectively in the extraordinary position where a $60 million Federal Royal Commission is pursuing um, the sort of paranoid obsession of a variety of um, very colourful characters, including Mr Nowicki, whose motivations uh, for spending their own time and their own money on these matters are entirely unclear. Well, um, and may know, never be inquired into either. Well, well, I do we, think, we think they actually should be, and we do think it's relevant, because uh, if you're going to rely on people's evidence, then how they came to give that evidence uh, and, uh, uh, and, and how they came to cooperate with other people giving evidence is clearly a relevant consideration, John. I do have to move on. Uh, we'll see whether or not any of this ever gets any particular um, debate within the Royal Commission or maybe in Parliament or elsewhere. Meanwhile, I'm, I'm myself, well, uh, 
feeling a little lonely and having these concerns, I might say, Tim Lyons, but thank you for your time this morning too. The Assistant Secretary of the ACTU, Tim Lyons. 13 minutes to nine, coming up in a moment, more disclosures about the AFL trying to cosy up to Asada to do a deal over Essendon players' futures, but some text messages not giving up on the Gillard protection racket, are you? Ask this man if the Royal Commission into Child Abuse is a show trial too, asks Peter from Q. Anonymous writes, what an extraordinary manipulation of the justice system. I worry for my children's future with this government and their systematic distortion of the truth. Well, this isn't the government, I'd say, in response. I'm happy to read out your text message, but this is the Royal Commission. And so Humphrey Appleby, from Yes Minister, being quoted in this text message, never set up an inquiry unless you know what the outcome will be. 12 minutes to 9.